is one of best uh, what we call the fish that we recommend to everybody. Okay? Why is that? Why is that? When even though under pink lights, I don't know it's under pink lights. Yeah. The face is almost a full full face red. Yeah. Okay. Some fishes when they grow older, the face sometimes the cheek doesn't become a full face. Right. The one. The only. The Asian arowana. And I just need an intro, so I don't really know what I'm doing. But let's let's roll the footage of the most beautiful tour of the secret dungeon where the Asian arowanas are kept. For us, not all the fishes here are for sale actually. Some of them are actually here because a customer give it to us, either for operation purpose. Okay. Oh, they are injured, sick, and they need some help with us. Okay. Okay. Because sometimes when the fish gets too like illness, very very severe illness. Yeah. They couldn't treat. They'll bring it down here. All right. Okay. So which of these are here for show, or is it for sale, or which are here for? Okay. At the moment, for us, it's very very obvious. Usually, the top things are all for treatment. Okay. Okay. Sale so, are uh, at the bottom ones. Right. Okay. One thing you notice that for us, we don't really like to put fish all together, we always separate them. Because in this case, we always want the fish to have its individuality. When right. you put inside a company tank, how much they eat, how much they don't eat, is very, very hard to monitor. Mm. When you put them separately, you how much they eat, you can actually gauge. Yeah. This fish eating enough, uh, this fish generally by itself doesn't eat a lot. Okay. So you actually have a very good sense of how each fish is. Right. How do you how you monitor them? Alright. Although we are mainly for me wise I'm focused mainly on rates, alright, but our mentor does both. Okay, so we have very very few crossbacks in stock. Okay. Okay. We don't really we some of them because what? There are crossbacks two types in the market, golden head and non-golden head. So for non-golden head type you just put them in two tanks. So these are which type? These are non golden head type. Yeah, non -golden, uh, head. golden head, I will show you our tucks. Okay. Right? For non golden head type, because one thing, the jeans is not there, it's not that strong. Okay. We put inside a tank because why? It doesn't make a difference if you put in the tub or not. Yeah. Right. There's no difference. Right. Okay. And one thing go so, about. So these are all red crossbacks. No crossbacks. Crossbacks. Cross oh, just just crossbacks. Crossbacks is uh, usually gold color. Uh, what very uh, not very hot in the market. Blue base crossback. Blue base. So yeah. this is which one? The blue base. Blue base crossback. Blue base crossback. Right. Okay, for that one on your left, the biggest one is the red. Red arrow, okay. but at the moment now it's going under some treatment. Okay. This, oh, this, one, this, this is considered golden head prospect. Golden head prospect. Yeah. Because you can see on the top, you can see the gold patches is starting to develop. Yeah, okay. yeah there's a shine there. Right? Filming in progress is going to make sure that we have our time together. I see you. Yeah. yeah these are for fishers with uh, more serious illness. So what happened to this guy? Hey, this bugger now is recovering. Okay, what happened last time is that you notice that the face is very wrinkled. Some of them even have pimples, blisters on the face. Yeah. Okay. Usually very, due to very, very poor water conditions. Poor water. Poor water. Poor water conditions. Right? And then. How, how, how low temperature is then is considered poor? For her one, anything below 25, 26. Right. It's considered cold for them. Right. In this case, you notice that there's also quite a few scales missing. Alright, we actually plucked out some of the scales. Okay, because one thing is that the scale already deformed. Yeah. Because one thing we should know is that for any of the fishes, if the scale is cracked or even chipped, this can't recuperate by itself. It's permanently there. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to pluck it up. Right. And then let it regrow again. For small fish, generally it will go within uh, one month or so. Big fish will take a rather very, very, very long time. So how, how long is he going to stay here? Probably <laughs> for another two months. Wow. And for a month or two. Yeah, it looks... Uh, it's pretty beat up by itself already. Yeah. Yeah, so now it's uh, recuperating. Right, you can see, for example, here about three to four skills missing. The entire top row also will be removed. 
eventually it will grow back all the it way. It will down. grow back, but then it will take quite a long time. Will it, will it look um, like normal again or will it look different? Okay, when it's developing, surely the color will lose out to the main body or the other scale. Yeah. Once it fully recovered, the color will be exactly the same. So I was at my friend Marcus Arowana showroom the other day, filming an Arowana video for you guys. And it got me thinking. I've made so many videos on arowanas and specifically Asian arowanas, but I've never actually owned one of them. This comes to our our new batches. Okay. So these are all Indonesian rates. All right, my mentor managed to get them from the farm. So you hand, he handpicked this. He handpicked them from the farm himself. Okay, but one of them there's a. There's a defect, they actually throw it to us because we get more than a certain amount of this. Right. But usually for this type of deal issue is rather serious. Okay, but it will take probably about two months plus to recover the entire deal plate. Yeah. Right? One, so when he when he picks out this fish, right, right? Pick, what does he look for? Okay. Usually when it comes to small fish, you can't really choose in terms of colour one because when they are small basically they all look the same. Yeah. Until they grow older. What we look for in the batch? The body shape, the body shape, okay. the tail, and to be some of the patches, for example, okay. One thing we look out for is the broadness of the body. So, like for example, when you look in the entire batch, yeah, you notice that some of them are slimmer, some of them are higher bodies. So, yeah, uh, the height is it? The height, correct. Okay, the height. So, one thing is the height. So, you can notice some of them are actually very, very broad. Some of them are slimmer. Right. Okay. I see. It. All okay. right. Yeah. All right. Yep, so usually we'll go for broad bodies. Because broad bodies wise are what we define as sumo jeans. Okay. They'll they be very fat when broad, they're very bulky. There's the spoon head shape. Yeah. Yep, this is what uh, most people who actually buy reds go for. Okay. Alright, secondly is the tail. Tail must be big. So you want it to like spread out? Is yes, it? must be spread out. Then the pectoral fins must be long. Right. Okay. So for some pieces you can actually see when you go up close up, you actually get to see the cheek itself start to have a little bit of coloration coming out. Yeah. Yeah. This is very uncommon for small fishes. But some of them will still have them. This is how we define whether this batch is good or not. Because for very small fish around 5 inches plus, to have some coloration on the cheek is very rare. Yeah. Yeah. That's why for us we judge based on our prices, we don't go by the size. Rather, we go by the quality first. Okay. Then the size, after that, will come into conclusion. The size, technically, you can grow it. Yeah, size, yeah. technically, you can grow. Then, second thing, you know, for farm, sometimes when they bring in, the size is already 7 to 8 inches, but then, because of the quality, it's much higher price. Yeah. Yeah, so we always judge by quality first. Then, we go so by body size. shape, fin, and then you look at the height also. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually the older batch. These are all reds. All reds. Okay. Then one thing is that for a lot of people get mixed up between uh, this Indonesian red or what we call grade 1 and grade 2 or right. what we call banja red. Yeah. Uh, they're very common market. So this is which grade? This is grade 1. Grade 1. Yeah. One thing you notice about this red, even if you compare with a banja red, a banja red at this size can be much redder than my grade 1. Yeah. Yeah, but over time, over in time, the color will fade. Right. This one, in, uh, over in time, the color will start to develop. Right. So that's the main difference between a great one and a great two. Okay. Alright? So when I first started making videos about Asian arowanas, you know, breeding and all of that, I saw Asian arowanas as one thing. The Asian arowana. But if you're a hobbyist, if you're in this niche, then you know, and if you're not, then I'm trying to get you to know that it's a whole different world of many different Asian arowanas. We have the red arowana. We have the blue base crossback, the golden base crossback, and then you will hear terms like full helmet, crossback, golden head, all these terms that the outsider is just going to be confused. This is also another one of our batches. Just came in. Uh, just came on Sunday. Okay. Also for Indonesia. Right. Hold on, uh, let me see. Because red size is where our main concern is. Yeah. 
Right. So, so it's the it's the color of the light that makes it look so goldenish. Yes, correct. Okay. Because the this thing is what we call the PL light. You understand when I mentioned to you? Yeah, yeah. PL light. There's two type. One is the yellowish type. One is the white one. Yeah. Because now currently when young, the time they still need sunlight. Okay. So we just use PL light. That's okay. why it's a bit yellowish. Right. Second, another thing we look out for is that as a batch by itself, even though I on the, this is a bit of mixture. It's about white and blue lights. Yeah. Yeah, I think the body itself is already red. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Compared to that one, that one using pink lights. This is using white lights. Correct. Right. This one itself is very, very red. So this is how we determine whether this batch is good to take in or not. Right. Because for reds at a very young size, sometimes when even at this size, it's a bit yellowish. Yeah. Uh. So wait, these are great. Great one. ones. So they are exactly the same, just that these have better color. Better color. Because this is another batch. Right. Uh, both batches are different. On the left batch has better body shape, this batch coloration is stronger. Right. Uh, so depending on batches, some batch there will be differences between one another. Yeah. Not all of them are the same. So you are all going through tanning now lah. These are what we call soft tanning lah. Okay. okay. Not much of an issue. You just leave it on like this the whole day or? We leave it on uh, probably about four to five hours a day only. Okay. So what happened to this guy? Okay, this burger is uh, one of our pieces on sale. Okay, it's not coming down. Okay. This is actually one of our collector pieces. This guy actually is what we call cross belly jeans. So when you notice the belly area, <laughs> Notice that the belly area it has spots around the belly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is what we call cross belly. It's a very very hard to find fish. Not all fishes. Probably out of ten to twenty fish, only less than five of them will have it. Wow. Yeah. That's why for a good rate it costs very very high. If it's a cross belly rate, I've seen some above five digits. Wow. Oh. For the price for one rate. Okay. So, I mean most of the time we go by cross back, this one is a yeah, cross, cross belly. belly. Yes. Okay. Because in nat natural selection, usually top dwelling fishes, the belly is all white. Yeah. Because due to predatory instinct, you know, when the fish looks up to the top, it has to be white. So it looks exactly like the sky. Yeah. For them to develop cross belly colors, is actually very, very rare. Because right. this is not part of natural selection. Yeah. Mm, this is something else entirely. The first aspect of arowana variations is the color. And the color can be the actual color itself, whether it's a blue base, a golden, or a red. But sometimes there are nuances to the colors. Like a grade 1 red arowana is of a different standard than a grade 2 or what they call the banja red for the red arowana. So that brings us to the second point, which is the nuances. And the nuances are the different things that we look at after we identified the color. So it could be a golden crossback. Now let me let me try and explain this. Okay, this is probably the ugliest Asian arowana you're ever gonna see. I'm so so not sorry about this. Well basically what you see is all our mid size rings, okay? They have already been in tanning for about one year, okay. six months to a year or so. Okay, this is what light we are using. We using this Xiang Ting light. Okay. Okay. It's made in China, but it's very very good. That's why all our entire showroom all are using that light for it. Right. This is one of best uh, what we call the fish that we recommend to everybody. Okay? Why is that? Why is that? When even though under pink lights, I don't know it's under pink light. Yeah. The face is almost a full, full face red. Yeah. Okay. Some fishes when they grow older, the face sometimes the cheek doesn't become a full face. Some of them is only half. Some of them up to three quarter. This is almost full face. Right. Right. Secondly, the rims are developing, and they are considered thick rim type. Okay. Okay. So you can see there are two two tones of color. One very thick outside. The greenish base is inside. Okay. Yeah. Right. So how do we define a good fish or not? When we tan this fish, uh, what you say this fish is good? Until the outer rim reaches about 2 to 3 mm. 
Uh-huh. That means from the top to bottom is all very thick. We will use PR light. Okay. This PR light will actually help to spread the outer rim to cover up the entire steel coverage. Okay. So this is what some people call it the full block rate. Uh, this would be something that a lot of collectors will want. Yeah. Because to get it to this stage is very easy. You put standing light a year or so, it will develop by itself. But to develop it to a full block rate is another very long process. And not all fish will have full block. This guy here is actually a short body rate. Okay. Okay. Now due to demand a lot of people actually looking for short body, one thing uh one thing it benefits the owner because now when they don't grow up to that massive, yeah. I can keep them in a smaller tank. So usually how big do the short body get? Usually biggest at best about fifteen to sixteen inches. Which means how much about oh, one point five foot. What's the tank that they will need? Uh they minimum maximum they can keep inside a four feet very very long time. Okay. Almost permanently. Yeah. Right. A uh, normal rate, which is not short body type, you need a 5 by 2.5 tank. Right. So you're cutting down at least by one foot space. Yeah. And that's very rare to find in HDB nowadays. Because the HDB now are getting smaller and smaller. Yeah. Right. So it does doesn't actually look that like some short bodies look super. Some bodies look super short and then the head is uh very look, spoony type. Yeah, they look yeah. deformed. That's a second type. There's two types. One is short body, second one is what we call a king. Okay. Or what we call the far full long. Ah, right? yeah. the very very thick head, very nice spoon. Yeah. Super compressed type. Yeah. Ah. Those even smaller is it? Even smaller and secondly to be very honest, their last bench very short. Right. Right? So just imagine when you get older you grow. Right? Because your body can grow, but your internal organs are still growing. Yeah. And they are compressed. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the health issues that all short body will have okay. in the future. Right? But yeah, they are exotic, the prices are very, very high. Oh, it costs a lot more than a normal engine. Yes, for this size here, we are looking at 2 plus K. Wow. Yeah, because of the feature it's short. Yeah. Mm. That's why now, even you go to any other pro arowana shops, a lot of them are bringing short bodies now. Yeah. Because they are easier to maintain, you don't, you don't need such a big tank. That, that, that is something that I would like, because usually I don't like the short body because it looks so deformed. Yes. But this one looks okay. Yeah, this one is just short. That's all. It's yeah. not that kind of deformed like a balloon plate. Yeah. Only a platy that kind of look. Uh, yes, that's why we understand. That some of them they go for far for long, some of them will go for this kind of short body. Yeah. Two different things. So when we talk about cross backs, first, this is the back of the arrow runner. Now, we have two terms that we always hear a high back and a cross back. So when we say cross back, what we mean is that the scales and the rims of the scales and the coloration goes all the way up and crosses. On, so it goes up on both sides and it crosses, right? That gives us the cross back. Now when we talk about the high back, it means that it doesn't cross but it goes high. So usually what you will see at the top is a grey area or almost like a black to grey area. And so the scales will look like almost they almost stop and it doesn't actually cross over on both sides. And so there are different things or ways that the people assess whether it's a high back or cross back beyond just looking at this line here. And it goes by the number of rows of scales. So I think it's something like six rows. So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six and it's six, even if there is a bit of black or grey here, it still can be considered a cross back. And then I think if only it hits the fifth or the fourth row, then it's called a high back. Of course the hobbyists what they are after or the more valued fish is the cross back. First stage that I told you just now was about the red rings. Yeah. Second stage is the skill coverage. Okay. That's for this, you don't see any LED anymore. We are all using PLX. Right. Right? So this will actually help to improve the scale coverage. Right? I need to move forward a little bit. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Usually when you come to telling, they'll be stressed. Right? So now when it goes inside. So you can see now that the orangey rings is start to spread into the inner core of the scale. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually what we call scale coverage. I have another specimen down there. It's much clearer to see. Okay. Yeah. 
Now the next term you're gonna hear are terms like golden head and and full helmet. I don't know if it's a half helmet, I have no idea. But let me share with you what I know. So of course we already know we're talking about the head of the arowana. Now if it, if you look at most of the Asian arowanas, if you look at it from top down and you look at their head, it's gonna be a bit like this back. It's gonna have a lack of color. It's gonna look very grey and you know, this the coloration usually comes here, comes here, comes here, comes here, but it doesn't really go to the top. Now this might be for obvious reasons, maybe they avoid predation in a while. So when a, a bird or you know some a, a animal looks down into the pond or into the river uh, into the water body, it is going to look it's going, it's going to camouflage, it's going to be dark, it doesn't stand out, so it doesn't, it, pre it prevents predation, right? This is a survival mechanism, but of course as hobbyists, we want the most colorful, beautiful fish there is to be colored all around. It's not about natural instinct anymore, it's not about natural, um, it's not about survival anymore, because these guys are going to live the pampered life of the aquarium fish. So when we say a golden head arowana, what we mean is that there is color at the top. Now, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but full helmet is the term to describe the intensity and the, the full coverage of the golden head at the top. So if it's full helmet, it means almost something like the crossback. It crosses over and it's top, front to back, side to side complete goal. So that's why we are talking about golden heads. Yeah. Right? We have two things here. Right? So you can see from the top. Right? So golden heads are basically a more premium kind of jeans where the cross back even the head is gold color. Oh. Some of them call it full helmet to go. Right? Golden heads basically we really maintain them to be stable in a white top for at least a year. Oh. Alright, because once you throw them into a white tank, even though it's a white tank, blue tank, the head will start to fit. Yeah. You will need a white and totally white environment where all the light can bounce off every angle to keep the go head contained and make it stabilize first. Right. Uh, this is the issue with go head, especially if you don't have a tuck and then you put in a white tank and try to maintain it. It's very difficult to maintain it in a tank. Yeah. And a tuck wise is very very easy. Right. Uh, so say, if you transfer it into a tank, it will you lose the gold shine or at the moment, yes. For now, yes. That's why for us usually when we recommend customer, let's say you want to keep full go head, once you reach fifteen to sixteen inches, yeah. About a year, then you transfer. Okay. The go head will fit but maybe ten to twenty percent will not fit that much. Okay. So these two are the same, is it? So this is another short body type. Honestly, I can't even tell. It doesn't yeah. look. It really doesn't, doesn't have that. Yeah, doesn't have that deform look. Yeah. Yeah, but short body is very easy to determine. When you look at the fish, you notice that the body, okay, the tail, the tail and the body. The tail is about one third of his body length. Oh, so only the body grows shorter. The fins are fins, about the same length. Yeah, still about the same. Right. Usually, when you see the body is very big, but the tail is long. But you notice that the proportional is not there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, usually in short body already. Very oh. easy to tell. Okay. Alright? Actually, it gives a nice effect. It makes it look like it's longer pins than... Yeah, and then it makes it look like a sumo. Yeah, because even the, the pectoral pins look very long for this. Yeah. This length. So just now as well, I'll compare to the other pins. You notice that this one, the cheek isn't full. Correct. Right? It's only up to three quarters. Yeah. And not all fish will have two cheek. It's very hard to get. That's why that one is our gem at the moment for big size. Right. Right? Then this one, this one is actually one of my personal favorites. Why is it? I don't have money to buy it, so probably have to wait. Right, look at the scale coverage. Okay. This is a very very thick outer rim already. Not only that, it's beginning to spread into the inner core of the scale. Yeah, and it's not even that big yet, right? It's not even that big yet. 
fully crossed, very thick rims, and the covering, the coverage of the steel is starting to begin already. Yeah. So it's a very very exceptional piece. Is it a short body? No, it's not. It's not right. Now when you compare left and right, you notice know, there's a very big difference in the body. Let me see. Yeah. Uh... Mm. Yeah, their fins. Look, other than okay, this one is longer pectoral fins. Yeah, correct. But besides that, the rest of the finish. It's yeah. about the same length, but this guy is not longer. Longer. Yeah. You know, the body that's so long. And so this is the difference.